out here at some trailhead in the Pike National Forest. About 45 miles in, been pretty good. I haven't recorded a whole lot. So I just stopped to take a look at the view, check everything out. Really nice, pretty. The bike's looking good. That is a problem. That is a huge problem. I'm missing an axle bolt. Not, I mean, oh God. <sighs> All right, so there's my wonderful fix. I looked at the photos I took back at that little park. I don't know exactly where it is on the map. I didn't look too long, but it was on it in that photo. So it's gotta be between here and the restaurant and that really wasn't too long ago. So it looks like I'm gonna have to backtrack, but I could keep going, but the chances of me finding another one is pretty, uh, probably pretty low when I need it. So here we go. All right, not even like a minute down the road. And look what's right here. Got it. So I got one piece. Now the nut can't be far. But holy hell. All right, thank God, thank God. All right, now I gotta find the nut. So I didn't have any luck finding that axle nut. I drove all the way back to the little town of Deckers, Colorado, um, and looked along the side of the road and that just wasn't having any luck. So when I was back in Deckers, uh, what I did is I bought a little radiator hose repair kit from the little general store there. And I took out their smallest hose clamp and I used that on the back axle threads um, just to tighten that down and it would sort of act like a, like an axle nut of, in, in sorts. And it actually worked out pretty well. There wasn't any movement I could tell um, after this entire drive, which was about 30 miles. Luckily, I used their Wi-Fi at the restaurant in Decker's and I was able to look up where the nearest hardware store was, which luckily I was already passing through the town. Called them, just made sure that they had the nut there just in case I had to backtrack back to Denver. Um, but they did have it there. I bought two spares, which might have been a little much. Um, but otherwise, uh, it worked out in the end, and I was able to get my new axle nut. But this was not a fun ride at all. All right, just got out of the woodland hardware here. Put the new axle nut on. It stays. It's starting to rain. So I have to get prepped for that. In there. Get on that front. I look gross, but check it out. This is after like 170 miles of riding, and this is not even the tat yet. This is something I planned. Um, just a connector from Denver to Salida. Well, to CO3, Colorado 3 to Salida. But just check how far you can look. These are just rolling hills in every direction. Sorry if this is kind of. Um, <laughs> Uh, nauseating, but anyway, just wanted to show. Little, little Humpty Dumpty's doing pretty good. We were hitting those little trails there, pretty, pretty hard. Actually, maybe a little too hard. So we're gonna, we're gonna relax. But uh, doing good, doing good. All right, tat day two. Uh, I'm in Salida, Colorado, right now. I stayed at this mountain motel for the night. Decent little spot. Two beds. Good rest. Um, I just, I got into town too late, eating too late. And I didn't feel like going out and finding a camping site and all that. So today I'm hitting the mountain passes. I can see some out there, uh, mountain capped or snow capped mountains. Good day yesterday. I kind of already have the review down, but I realized I lost my hydro pack, two liter water bottle, and then my ABB water bottle, which is the insulated one I kept on top. So that was kind of obnoxious. But anyway, today, um, you know, cleaned up, showered. I got some clothes I got to throw on the back to dry out. Here's the motel. Here's where I parked the bike for the night. It's all loaded up now, but it actually worked pretty well. Just keeping it out of prying eyes.
All right, I'm currently taking a break. Um, I have my first mini injury or something. I should probably stand my bike up. I smell gas. All right, a little summary. So I was going up Marshall Pass. The side-by-side -side was coming in, and I moved to the side. I didn't really pay attention to my surroundings and got my foot pinned between a little rock cliff that was coming out and my foot peg and pinched my foot, foot pretty bad. Hurt like hell, pretty much dropped to my side right afterwards. Um, so yeah, I took my foot off. You can see I'm walking around on it. it there's there's pain, but it's, it's, not, it's not too bad. It, right now it kind of feels like, um, I don't know, like I dropped something heavy on my toes or like I stubbed my toe really bad. Um, so I'm not too worried. There's no swelling. I took my other foot off, kind of compared the two feet and my other foot off, my boot off, compared the two. It didn't look too bad, so. Marshall Pass, and possibly a broken foot. How does this happen? Been here for a while, I think. I actually didn't think this was going to happen for longer than at least the second day, but today was a lot of miles without gas stations. It was, well, probably, I'm going to think of it, I should have gotten gas this morning at Sargent's, but here it is. I got a fueler up. She's blinking on me, so I hope parks are uh, Lake City down there. I hope they have fuel.
All right, so it's the morning of August 13th. Uh, I'm in a campground outside of Lake City, Colorado. I don't know why I'm standing so awkwardly. Uh, it was cold last night. Uh, I gotta stop in Silverton, see if there's some other stuff going on, but I just had breakfast. I mean, one of the, um, just the freeze dried meals. And then I'm about to take my tent down. That went pretty smoothly. Um, changed into fairly new clothes today. Um, meaning the shirt and the underwear were just sink washed at the hotel from last night. Um, toes hurting. Yeah, just packing up. The camping gear worked pretty well. It was a pretty campsite. It was a whole area of Colorado. It was pretty. Um, so we're going to go over that, load the bike up, check over the bike, and then hit it. First stop is Cinnamon Pass, and then to uh, California Pass, then Corkscrew Pass, and then Silverton, and then to Ophir Pass. This is Cinnamon Pass. Pretty cool. Cinnamon Pass. We're about 12 and a half miles in. All right, so I'm at 12,606 feet. Riding up that was tough. Front tire up in the air sometimes, sometimes too slow, not enough to even uh, get up on my own power. I had to kind of use my feet and kind of just balance it just so the bike could, you know, all the way up. This is Cinnamon Pass. Cinnamon Pass, Colorado. One or two close calls, nothing, nothing show stopping, or what I think would have been show stopping, but. I'm about to cross over this, so I figured let me start filming. A lot of this bent rock too exposed, which is kind of nice because it's solid and somewhat, somewhat flat. Oh, actually, that's good. Here we are. Cinnamon Pass. Elevation 12,640 feet. BLM. That is. pretty much unreal. That's wild. Oh my, I've never seen anything like this. And I'm the only one here. Really pretty unreal. I'm probably going to say that 14 times. This is kind of all gone away. Holy crap. Jeez. Ugh. You know, before learning about the tat and this, I kind of would have thought this was not impossible, but definitely not civilian um, accessible, I guess. I mean, jeez. Unreal. Unreal. So we up here at Cinnamon Pass. Elevation 12,640 feet. And it felt like it. <laughs> La Honda, she did she did good. Uh, There's some times we had a paddle. I mentioned this in another video. We had a paddle up. She was pretty much in first and second gear the whole time. Pretty much first. Um, pretty good overall. The little 4x4 four four went off. but There she is. Well, it's only downhill from here. And there's some snow up there. I see snow. Jeez. is unreal unreal she made it damn 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 perfect this is tough i gotta walk this thing up i think a lot of this i got it pinned twice i had to get off the bike and walk with it You gotta get up there. Good God. Well, these switchbacks are pretty aggressive. Those look less so, so we'll see. So here's the top of California Pass. This was uh, after I walked the bike up, essentially from that last curve on the switchback where I was recording the last video, right there just before it kind of goes out of frame. Uh, this juice was worth a squeeze. That was 
I was recording myself in, the, in another video, but this was probably the most physically exhausting thing I've ever done, walking the bike up at almost 13,000 feet. Uh, but this was unreal. This was definitely a, a highlight of the day and the trip. Out here at Hurricane Pass, Colorado. Let's check that out. It's hard to tell, but this is steep. I mean, it's not terrifying knowing I'm going slow, because I know slow enough on this kind of bedrock, I'm not gonna slide off, but yeah, good God. I'm gonna go through the middle here. It looks pretty even. Nobody's coming my way, at least I can tell. I gotta make sure that my feet don't slip either, because I'm using them for support. All right, now I'm like sitting off the bike, the front tire is low enough. Okay, down, get down and slid. Okay, then we're off. All right, not bad. All right, first like water crossing, I guess we could actually get on camera. This looks actually kind of hefty. Kind of hefty. Not too bad. All right, just gonna punch it. Get out of here. Yeah, baby, hell yeah. Oh, she got a little wet. All right, all right, we're out of it. It's going right. So here is Ophir Pass, being overcast and a little bit rainy does add to the kind of hellish feel to it. This wasn't too bad getting up. I took one part where I needed to get off and pedal the bike up. And here it is, 11,789 feet. Otherwise, I'm pretty bad. I don't know what it's going to be like going down, but hopefully smooth sailing from here. Silverton was cool, got fueled up, got all my water and food, or snacks I should say, so the bike's doing really good. Can you see that slight outline of a road all the way back in there? See that? I just came down that. In the sh crappiest, shaliest, dinner plate plastic rock you could ever think of. That sucked. Dropped the bike twice. It was hailing. I'm soaked, can't really tell. There's Ophir Pass, true to form. So while you look at these sheep, I should probably explain. I know it's Ophir Pass, but I'm kind of taking Ophir from uh, Angelo from Some Guy Rides who did this trip on his CT125 uh, with John last year. Uh, I just think Ophir is funnier. Hello cows, I come in peace. I might be wearing leather gloves, but be be aware, I was obsessed with you as a kid. So these cows here are kind of the first of probably a thousand cows I ran into uh, during the tat, pretty much all the way until the end of Oregon. Uh, it was pretty fun, it was kind of a recurring theme, running gag throughout the whole trip. 
it added honestly kind of you know it kind of spruced up part of the day when you would turn around the corner and just this huge hunk of beef would be sitting there but um but yeah so they were pretty cool and they were just one of uh, a lot of animals i ran into while out on the tat so it's the morning just, just reloading the bike with everything some of the stuff that i just put in the box in a bag for overnight So here's Utah. 